Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to this Spotfire video brought to you by Datafuel. My name is Kyle Amata, and today I'm going to show you a demo of a forecasting model that I built in TIBCO Spotfire. I've received several questions recently asking how to forecast values with Spotfire, so I wanted to share this example of what forecasting might look like in Spotfire. One way to do this is with the built-in option of the Holt Winters forecast, which is what I'm showing on this graph. This might be okay for a quick analysis, uh, but there's no way to get the values out of Spotfire. It's just a line on a chart. Or what if you want to use a different equation or another forecast method to calculate future values? You could insert calculated columns to draw a curve from your existing data, but the problem is that you can't add any rows. Whatever the last time period is in this table, that's all of the data that I can calculate. It's not like Excel where you can just drag down the formula for future time periods. So what does this look like in Spotfire? Well, forecasting typically involves two parts. One, fitting a curve to historical data, and two, using the equation from the fitted data to predict future values. It's pretty straightforward to fit a curve to existing data using calculated columns, but I can't forecast future time periods with this historical data since there's no future dates in my table. The way to get around this problem is to create a new table in Spotfire using a simple Terra script, and then calculate both the fitted and the forecast values in this new table. After that, you can use this data in any of the visualizations available in Spotfire, or export the data table for external reporting or analysis. In this example, I'm using oil production data to forecast future production values. It's important to estimate future production for budgeting, facility management, field development purposes, and a number of other reasons. This data is very simple. I've got monthly production data, which is the total oil produced in a month, for 10 different wells. I've normalized the time scale with this calculated column named T, so all of the values start in month one. The DCA model tab, and DCA just stands for Decline Curve Analysis, this tab has a panel to enter the custom inputs into the forecast model that's used to calculate both the fitted and the forecasted values. This model was set up to predict future oil values using decline curve analysis and the hyperbolic decline function. However, you could modify and customize these inputs with any equation for your particular data. This graph at the bottom shows the historical and forecasted values, and the top right table shows the calculated values from the forecast model. To use this tool, I'll start by selecting the well that I want to forecast. Then I'll type in the number of time periods to forecast. This data is monthly, so 60 periods will predict five years into the future. Next, I'll enter a value for the offset period, which just changes when the calculation starts. For example, if the first few months of production are not representative of the actual production, then I can exclude these months by offsetting the forecast. Now I'll enter a value for the IP rate, or the initial production rate. This is the starting value in the calculated curve. The next input I'll adjust is the decline rate, which is the annual percentage that a well declines per year. For example, a rate of 0.05 would mean that the well is declining by 5% per year. I can move this slider until the curve approximately fits the data. And finally, I can also adjust the B factor by moving the slider in the same way. The B factor describes the rate of change of the decline rate over time. And as you can see, as I adjust these inputs, the graph at the bottom is changing. This is because the underlying model is recalculating and automatically updating when I make changes. Once I'm satisfied with this result, I can export the data table and save it for future use. Now I've already done this forecast once, so I have the option to overwrite that previous forecast or save it as a new file name. This might be helpful if you want to do multiple versions or multiple forecasts for a particular well we can just save different file names so we keep the old ones. Now we'll go to the next well, adjusting my inputs to fit the curve to this historical data.
I'll also export this result and again overwrite the previous forecast. I can continue this process for each well in our data until all of the wells have been forecasted. And this table in the middle summarizes all of the decline parameters used to calculate these forecasted values. Notice how this table changes after I refresh the data table to reflect the most recent calculation. After running this model for all the wells, we can view the forecasts in a combined data table. Let me reset the filters to show all five wells, or I can use the filters to adjust the well name to look at each well individually and compare that against its aggregated production history. For each one of these wells, it looks like the fitted and forecasted values, shown in blue, are closely matching the actual production history. This gives me confidence that the forecasted values are an accurate representation of what might happen in the future. To get back to the aggregated total for all five wells, I'll just reset this filter. While this video has shown what a forecasting model in Spotfire looks like, the step-by-step -step instruction required to build this model is beyond the scope of a short YouTube video or blog post. If you want to learn how to create forecasts like this in Spotfire, I'm offering to show you the step-by-step -step instruction through an online short training course. After learning these techniques, you'll be able to build a custom model that predicts future values based on the inputs that you define. And this is not just for oil and gas. You can follow the instructions and adjust the inputs and equations to tailor it for your specific application. To check out this training, just visit the link in the video description below. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.